Hello, Dragon Tubers, and welcome to another Let's Play series with me, Bluinculo. Today we're going to start playing through Dragon Quest 2. Just like when we played through Dragon Quest 1, it's going to be the remake for the Super Nintendo or Super Famicom because it was originally only Japanese, this version. So we're using a fan translation, which probably changes some of the names and uh, locales a little bit, but otherwise it's a uh, pretty straight upgrade over the original Dragon Warrior 2 NES version. Um, so hopefully, uh, if you're watching this series, you may have watched my Dragon Quest 1 series, uh, seeing as it's kind of you know, related, obviously the story's pretty connected. And um, as we go through, I'll... Uh, I'll explain more about what's going on. So, let's begin our adventure. Now, last time we played as Blue, but, you know, honestly, <clears throat> it's a legendary name that can be passed down through the uh, <laughs> the, the annals of time. Well, let's go with Blue again. So this is going to be kind of similar to the Dragon Quest V Super Nintendo style graphics and uh, controls again, which will make a lot of the general navigating of towns and stuff a lot easier than the original NES version, just like when we played Dragon Quest 1 on the channel. Although there's a little bit more storytelling in this game than the first one. Extra cutscene. Ages ago, a young descendant of the legendary warrior Erdrick defeated the Dragon Lord, and returned peace to... something. The young man, together with his bride, left on a journey to build several new countries. These countries were ruled by the children of that couple, and were handed down to the following generation. One hundred years have passed since then. This is Moonbrook, which sounds like the right name for once. It is a country far to the southwest of Laurasia. Now, I'll just warn everybody that I'm far less familiar with the original Dragon Warrior 2 town names than I was in Dragon Quest Dragon Warrior 1. So if I don't notice changes, that's just, you know. In the courtyard of the castle, the king and young princess are passing the time with a peaceful talk. However... Something's making the castle shake. What's going on? Isn't anyone there? Oh, sire, it is terrible. The forces of the evil priest Hargon have invaded our castle. What? You say Hargon is attacking? Damn that, Hargon. We cannot surrender. Summon the soldiers. At once. Yes, right away. Too late. They're all dead. The uh, <laughs> castle guards in this game are kind of notoriously terrible. I don't think that's the right name for the princess, but we'll call her Linda for now. Maybe I'll look it up later what her proper name should be. If anything should happen to me, do not... Now go, quickly! I must inform the king of Laurasia of our situation. Come here, you demon. Take this, you bastard! <laughs> Probably not as many uh, the, uh, <laughs> insult names and slang in the... Uh, Official translations. Well, it looks like he's hurt more at least two of them. Or I suppose it's probably just Blaze more by now. Ah! <laughs> well, powerful demon wizard managed to sneak up and burn the king, and then everyone else in the castle dies. So Moonbrook would not be a very good place to start your career at. It's uh. Which everyone's dead. So yes, 100 years after the events of Dragon Quest 1, we've got the original descendant of Erdrick, who hooked up with the princess and traveled across the sea, and uh, all of their kids 
got castles, basically. And this is what we're dealing with now. One last guard manages to barely escape. And what the heck was that? Oh, sorry, my screen just... I'm really glad. <laughs> sorry, guys. <clears throat> that was my Steam notifying me that my stream, my stream had started. Every time uh, Steam updates itself, it changed its its permissions. So sometimes it just pops up and takes priority and minimizes my uh, my Super Nintendo emulator. So yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Won't happen again because you only get one notification. So the poor guard travels a very long way and is lucky to have survived that trek now that we well you won't know yet but that trek is not something a level one hero could survive so almost dead he arrives at another castle oh you're wounded someone pl please cast heal more quickly what on earth happened forget about me don't give me any medical herbs i must meet the king right now there are evil deeds i must relay don't worry, we don't we don't give out healing herbs to random guards. If everyone in the castle finds out, there will be widespread panic. We'll carry you quietly. Just a trail of blood. <laughs> poor, poor guy. Oh man, I just need to talk to the king. Please, no bandages. You have to walk up the stairs by yourself. And this guy is on death's door. He can barely even stumble to the king. No princess, though, this time. Mm, the soldiers of the evil priest Hargon attack... Oh, right, this is the... <laughs> the soldier. Ah, oh, king of Laurasia. The soldiers of the evil priest Hargon attacked my castle, Moonbrook. Hargon has called upon an evil god to fulfill his intention to destroy the world. Your highness, you must take action. Feels like if we'd healed him up a little bit, he might have been able to help us out a little bit more than that. Prince Blue, my son, did you hear his story? You are a descendant of the great warrior Erdrick. Now the time has come for you to test your strength. This is not the time to grieve. When you are prepared for your journey, come and see me. So we have... Legendary blood? Oh, right, by the way, <clears throat> please give that brave soldier a proper burial. We'll spare the shovels, but we can't spare the healing. So yeah, there we go. There's a little bit more to the introduction, but that'll pretty much cover it. So unlike Dragon Quest 1, we start a little bit stronger. Um, you know, we have better armor, but no weapon. And uh, I think a fair bit more HP than you start with in the original... Dragon Quest 1, especially with um, uh, the, the way this game works, well, this is the remake, so things won't be quite as hard, but Dragon Quest 2 is notoriously difficult. I think it's like pretty much unarguably the most difficult Dragon Quest game in the series, so that's one of the reasons why we're playing this Super Nintendo remake, is it's going to speed up some of the leveling and lower some gold requirements, so it should be just like... The, the Dragon Quest 1 remake we played a couple weeks ago, um, it should be considerably less terrible anyway. It's still going to be a hard game, but... Uh, I still feel like we walk really slow. Like, I'd love to have a double speed boots or something. Sprint shoes. Prince Blue, it looks like the time for you to leave has come. But even though it's for the people... It's sad to see you go. Oh yeah, this is the one that some. I remember this from before. Uh, sometimes the s s text scrolling is a little bit too fast, so you're gonna have to read really quickly. Uh, I think it's because of the translation from Japanese text to English text, and uh, sometimes you need an extra line of English, but the game doesn't pause to let you read it before it scrolls. So that's that's gonna be. And I'm praying that you have a safe journey. Be careful, P Prince Blue. Come now, Blue. Open that treasure chest. What? You found 50 gold? What an inheritance! Hey, a copper sword is way better than uh, the first legendary Blue got to start with. We had to smack things with a club for a while. 50 gold and a sword. Thanks, Dad. 
Now blue. Okay, that's it. Just go. In Sumaltria and Moonbrook, there should be others who sh me? share the blood of Erdrick. If you combine your power with these people, you can destroy the evil beings. The demons, perhaps. Be careful. Don't forget to equip your stuff. Yeah, so unlike the very first NES Dragon Quest game, uh, now you this is the first this was the first game where you actually had to equip stuff, basically. And um, that's not how you do that. You have to go uh, status equip. That's the one. So this is much more like basically from Dragon Quest two and onwards. This is this has been how the equipment screen sort of worked for until like Dragon Quest eleven, basically. So anyway, with that, we actually have reasonably good attack and defense for the early game, which is nice. Let's we'll see if we can buy a shield or something. So if you go west of the castle, you'll find a town called Lyriza, maybe. Um, and if you're heading to Sumaltria, that's where you go. Okay. So unfortunately, doors are still locked and we'll need keys to get through them. One day we'll get into that vault. One day. The king wouldn't even give us his treasure. And like half the castle is locked behind doors. And I... There's a door command, but yeah. Everything's locked. Oh, Prince Blue, please don't go. It's hard for me to talk about... Talk to you about such things. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Oh, oh never mind. Please forget about me. Don't waste your time on the wishes of a woman not to your liking. I'm not sure who this prince is really into, but clearly not her. Poor kid. Alright, this is the first time, rather than having the king save your game and tell your experience, this is where we set it up as, you know, the church. The church manages your experience and your, uh, your saving. That's, you get saved, you know. A person who enters a traveler's gate will... Oh, this is old man will instantly be transported to a far-off place. The gate here leads somewhere to an island. Some island. I don't really know. I just, I just tell people that this magic teleporter is going to lead them somewhere. You're on your own, Prince. I don't think this will actually do us any good right now. Although you can hear the overworld music, which is excellent. Anyway, so we're on an island that we can't do anything with. If you could get in a random encounter there, you'd probably just die, so let's not even try. Okay. But yeah, remember that for later, because that'll maybe be useful at some point. I hear that there is a young prince in Sumaltria, and a beautiful princess in Moonbrook. She's a cousin, though, so don't get any ideas. Prince Blue, for certain, you should share a bond with these people, like their family, basically. Long distance uh, pen pals. This one bloodline controls all the land. Okay, so this is just an inn, right? They even charge their prince four gold to spend the night. I'm not a traveler, I'm your prince. Kneel before me. Item shop. They might have something. I would like to buy. I would like to have a leather shield, to be honest. But, uh. We'll have to save up. That's like one less damage per attack. That'd be great. <laughs> and then there's a dog. Bow oh, wow. And that's pretty much it for our starting town. So we don't get any little uh, normal town next to the starting castle. We just get the castle. And uh, we're in the overworld. Now, unlike Dragon Quest 1, where you were fairly safe wandering around the starting area... Um, we're going to want to be a little bit more careful, because, as you can probably see, enemies no longer attack you one at a time, like in the first game. I seem to recall that going down this way and crossing that bridge is a terrible idea at level 1, so let's not go any further south. Hopefully we can kill slugs in one hit. We cannot. They're not hitting us too hard, but um, they, they're, they're stronger than a slime anyway. Now, I might turn the battle speed down a little bit if this is too quick for you guys to read, but for now, I mean, this is probably fine. Eh, and besides, there's going to be a lot of grinding, so 
Might as well let it go fast. So yeah, anyway, no longer do we just get to do one-on-one -on -one battles. This is where combat starts to get a little bit more complicated in Dragon Quest II. Now, one thing that's kind of important to note, even in the Super Nintendo remake, although I believe in, in the NES version you could not control your party members at all, um, but if you fight a group, for instance, I think these guys are all going to be one group, you'll notice that I can't specifically target any one monster in a group. This might be too strong, actually. I think I'm dead. Oh, we escaped. Okay, good. So three Drakeys, way too strong at level one. That's good to know. Anyway, my, my all I was trying to say was that, by the way, um, you, you it's harder to, to focus down specific enemies. There's kind of some uh, AI auto-targeting to, to deal with. So if you target a group and one monster is injured, uh, your character will generally target the enemy with the lowest HP that they can kill in one hit, if they can kill it in one hit, or just the lowest HP total in the group. Um, you don't get to you don't get to manually control that, unfortunately. So it's harder to spread the damage out if that's something you want to do. Of course, now that there are more than one enemies at, in a fight, we'll also have the opportunity to get area of effect ma uh, magic and attacks that uh, can potentially kill multiple enemies at once, and uh, that will also adds some complications. I mean, it's like any other RPG, like once you're, you know, this is the evolution of uh, GRPGs, really. Dragon Quest 1 was very simplistic, one-on-one -on -one fights, and then here we go. Now we're going to deal with uh, potentially three on, I don't know what the max enemy size is, probably like 10 or something. But our party, we might even get three heroes eventually. Don't look at the left of the screen, you'll, you'll get spoilers. So, basically, <laughs> because the Drakeys kicked my butt, I'm like, I should probably get at least a level up here. Two strength, one speed, one vitality, good amounts of HP. Uh, what I really want, though, is, is probably the heals. Ah, that's right, this guy doesn't get... So, unlike the first Dragon Quest game, where you start learning heal spells, the hero of this game does not learn magic, I don't think. This is your pure fighter character, basically. So we're going to have to buy herbs and stuff early on. Although I think I want to buy that, uh, that, that, that shield first before we really go anywhere. So what we're going to do is start putting a little bit of super speed. I know we need 90 gold to buy a, uh, a better shield. And I'll just kill a few slimes because it won't take very long. Especially not at super speed. And you just have to understand that for Dragon Quest 2, there's going to be sometimes where we need to level grind. That's enough money, but I need to also go to the inn, so... Keeping in mind, of course, that we are still getting more experience per fight than the original game. And then with a little bit of super speed now and then, we should be okay for hopefully making the videos entertaining without being super, super grindy. Alright, so now we've got our shield. That'll reduce damage we take a little bit. We might be able to kill Drakeys now. It's fairly plausible that you want to get to level 3 before we really travel to the next town. And I think, regardless, we're going to want a few medical herbs and maybe even an antidote herb because if we get poisoned, we're pretty much dead anyway. <laughs> you know how it is. Let's see if we can find some of those Drakeys now with a shield and a level up. Oh, Iron Ants. Okay. Um, they have more defense, certainly, than slimes, but they're not too bad. What do we get? Not a lot. They're like, they're as good as two slimes in experience. Then there's some poison swamp right up there that'll take damage every step you take, which we're not really interested in. I would say that, in general, this game, uh, Dragon Quest II, is more open world than Dragon Quest I was. Uh, you can see right at the beginning, we've kind of got three sort of major directions we could split off with, south, north, and west. But um, we, we were advised to head west towards uh, party members, essentially, because we do need to get a larger group. Like, one battle here has uh, taken away about half our total HP, so... Okay, that was a good level up. Lots of strength. Not very much HP. 
Mostly I just like the overworld music. And I believe it's not till the next game, Dragon Quest 3, where they actually introduce the day-night cycle. So at least we don't have to worry about the enemies getting stronger overnight. Um, that adds its own <laughs> bunch of challenges, obviously. But unless I just haven't been out long enough. I don't think that was in this game. There we go. We got one medical herb. We'll totally be okay now. It's a hard life, you know, being a prince. Apparently never did any training in my life. Because I've got a copper sword and I'm just barely stronger than slimes. Alright, I'm pretty sure this kind of group we should just slaughter. So we'll just sort of super speed through that. Let's see if we can get far enough west to get to the next town. I don't think it's very far if you know where you're going, but like I said before, I'm not as familiar with this map. So, uh, sometimes we'll have to do a little bit more legitimate exploration. There it is. I didn't think it was very far away. You could probably have made it at level 1, but... You wouldn't have been able to do much because you won't have any money, haha. <laughs> this is the town of Lyriza. Relax and heal your fatigue. Welcome for items. So Wing of the Chimera will take you back. I can't remember in this game if it's always back to the castle or just back to the last place you rested. In, in Dragon Quest 1 it was just back to the castle whenever you cast return, but this one might have been the game where they added just the last place you, you slept or saved. We'll see. We'll figure that out when we've got more money. Oh good, a vault, yeah. I didn't use that very much in Dragon Quest 1 because it's, it's kind of new for the Super Nintendo. I'm pretty sure there was no vault in the NES version of this game, so... That is good. I heard a rumor that Prince, that the Prince of Laurasia had set out to conquer Hargon. So that's not me, that's a different prince. Oh wait, that is me? I don't know. I don't know who I am. No, it's somebody else. <laughs> I never really planned on like conquering land, really. I thought I was just rescuing my uh, neighboring kingdom. If you walk far to the north, you'll reach Sumaltria. I did hear the news that Moonbrook was attacked. Come on, get out of the way. I want to check out the weapons. Stupid guards. Look at this. Classic JRPG. Alright, so what tempting gear do we have to look at? Uh, lots of good stuff. So... Chain Whips should be the first weapon that hits a group of enemies, unless that's not in this game. But it typically is a group of enemies. Mind you, 330 gold is a fair ways off. And then the Sacred Knife is not going to be worth the money. Um, I think this is more of a weapon for the mage characters rather than the main hero. And of course, armor is all good, but... I think the next real upgrade will be to get the Chain Whip, assuming we can eventually afford that. Yeah, well, look, I'm, I'm the prince. You could just give it to me on a loaner. My, my dad's good for it. He can pay. My younger brother is a soldier in Moonbrook. Suddenly he arrived here and he said, and said he was leaving his son in my care. I haven't heard from him since then. Do you think that something bad has happened to Moonbrook? Yes. Yes, didn't you hear the news? They're all dead. <laughs> Sorry. He found the lottery ticket. All right, so yeah. I'm pretty sure most of those uh, chest items, like cabinets and stuff, not actual treasure chests, but just like random searchable items, were not in the original game, but were added in uh, for the remake. Just like Dragon Quest 1. Yeah, if you're poisoned, it's pretty bad. <laughs> I'm sure you guys are familiar enough with games to know how that works. Look what you made me do! Oh. Well, stop Look, Stay away. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah, sometimes the original Japanese game was a little weird. Oh. If you travel west of this town, you'll find a monolith that takes you to Moonbrook. Oh, there's the sun. Sorry, sorry, kid. I think your dad's dead. But anyway, before we go to Moonbrook, we do need to gather up a bit more of a party. It feels like a kind of area that they might have hidden something on the ground, but I'm definitely not going to be checking every random square of uh, 
corner of the map to uh, look for secret keys. So basically, uh, as far as I understand, the next direction is north. We're about 25 minutes in, so let's just check the enemies around here before we go too much further to see if we've kind of got to a new difficulty zone. Um... I don't really want to grind a whole lot more, but yeah, I wanted to compare our powers against Drakeys. So one-shotting Drakeys is definitely good. We got a good solid level three. And unlike the old days, yeah, they can't kill me anymore. So that's good. Uh, there's also lots of new enemies, of course. That's... I, I think the first four Dragon Quest games were really where they established all the, like, canonical Dragon Quest monsters. So, you know, slimes and drakeys were in the original game, but now we've seen, what were they, ants and slugs and stuff? And those things become more common low-level enemies for the rest of the series, basically. Now, it does appear that we're not quite strong enough to guaranteed one-shot a drakey. If we roll a little bit low damage, we'll do seven or so and not quite kill them. So I still want to be a little careful out here. And the Iron Ants are the defensive early game enemies, so I assume maybe we can't kill them in one hit. Eh, we actually do almost the same amount of damage anyway. Well, what do you say we just go north? I've got that one medical herb. Oh look, its if you know where you're going, it's not very far away. But we do get new enemies that are actually pretty strong. Hopefully one on one we can take it, okay. Alright, so we've definitely got a new monster zone up here. We're not going to want to go much further. But, this is... Sumaltria! We, our first quest! We made it to Sumaltria on our first episode. <laughs> what have you got in Sumaltria for me, buddy? Uh, holy water. Keeps the enemies away for a little while. But nothing else is exciting. The other day, the southern sky could be seen burning bright red. Could something have happened to Moonbrook? Well, that's what everyone's saying. I do feel like a lot of these starter towns in Dragon Quest 2 are very small compared to some of the Dragon Quest 1 towns. I guess they're all newly established, though, comparatively. Like, they're not old towns. We want to... So we'd have to wait for the prisoners to walk to the bars to talk to them. Oh, could have talked to him. You know what, you guys? If you don't want to come talk to me while I'm at the bars, you just, you're not good enough. Oh, look! Another treasure chest behind a locked door. Ha ha ha. This is the chamber of Prince Rolando's younger sister. Mind your manners if you go in to see her. Well, hey there, hot stuff. Now, she's probably a cousin as well, right? Younger sister to the prince. Who are you? Are you a friend of my older brother? I don't know, maybe... I haven't really met him. I don't know, like, we're neighbors, we're cousins, like, you probably should know who he is. I'll say yes. Let me tell you something real good. My brother is very easygoing. He couldn't have gone very far. He takes so many breaks in his journey. Oh, right, he's, uh, maybe not here right now. Probably should have talked to the king first. Ah, there you are, Prince Blue. News of your journey has already reached us. Now I hear that there's a cave called the Spring of Bravery, far to the north of the castle. Huh, I wonder who goes there to maybe get braver. Oh, uh, it's you. Uh, hey, Prince Blue, you've come. Uh, by now, my son, Rolando, ought to have traveled to the Spring of Bravery. Uh, please find him and make him an ally. Blue, oh yeah, you need some experience. You're almost at level four, guys. It's pretty awesome. Would you like to continue your journeys? Yes, yes. We're probably already a higher level than Rolando. Oh, he's a little absent-minded, but he's a nice guy. In in the original Dragon Warrior 2, uh, this prince, I don't think Rolando was his original name. He was just so useless. Like, so bad. But hopefully in the remake, he's not quite as terrible. <laughs> I am a traveling merchant. Let me show you my wares. Hey, another weapon shop. Secret weapon shop. Um, basically the same as the last town, just missing something. 
but it's fine. I don't have any money, obviously. Come on, just lend me it. I'm trying to save the world here. Give me some armor. What magic the prince of this castle wields! However, he doesn't have great physical strength and can't wear heavy armor or weapons. He is a mage hero. So what you might be able to gather is that the original bloodline of uh, Erdrick's descendants has kind of split at this point. Not all of them are hero mage he uh, hero mage healers that have heal spell, fire spell, and lots of strength. <sighs> there may be three different sort of classes in this game. Well, that Drakey got just trashed. And that's the three experience we did. That's all I wanted for today's episode. Level four. Lots of strength, lots of HP. Well, that'll have to do. All right, well, I think for episode number one, I'm going to call that good. I believe level four should be enough to get us to the next area, hopefully. Although it is more expensive here. Cheapskates. Oh, and I'm a traveling prince. Let's charge him double in this town. You'd think... You know, if, if if we're cousins, you'd think that the kings would be, like, my dad and his dad would be kind of in uh, reasonable good communications. There'd be trade or something. Anyway, let's buy uh, one antidote herb, so we've got at least one. And maybe two more medical herbs, because honestly, we have no healing, and this second prince is not going to have any healing either, so... That's just going to be the... I'll just spend all my money as well. Alright, so I am going to call that our first episode. <clears throat> Oops, pressing the wrong button again. Alright, good start, I feel like. Uh, next episode, we'll see if we can find our second... Our first companion, really, our second character. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, everybody.